Christianity. The rings were simultaneously breathtaking but completely baffling. And there was just far more structure than people had anticipated. Not only did we find many, many concentric features within the rings, but we found eccentric rings. We found uh, that the F ring, which had been discovered by a pioneer, had braids in it and kinks and clumps, all these things no one had ever even dreamed about before Voyager got to Saturn. And then, of course, there were the spokes that Voyager discovered about a month or a month and a half before encounter. Uh, and these are these radial features in the B-ring that come and go. They are seen orbiting um, around the rings, and uh, no one had a clue, or at least not a, uh, not a reasonable clue in the beginning as to what caused these features or even what they were. That if you look at the rings of Saturn for a period of time and watch the spokes go around and round, and you examine the appearance of the spokes on the rings, that appearance changes. And it changes with a period that is equal to the period of the spin of Saturn's magnetic field. Voyager found that Saturn's magnetic field, as Pioneer 11 had already told us, is, uh, is weaker. That is, it's only about 1 20th the strength of Jupiter's magnetic field. That means its magnetic field doesn't extend as far from the planet, about a million miles from the planet. Uh, what Voyager discovered was how rapidly that magnetic field was rotating. The magnetic field at Jupiter rotates with a period just under 10 hours. At Saturn, it turns out, the magnetic field rotates with a period of about 10 hours and 40 minutes. So this was the first measure of the length of the day on Saturn. Turns out, when we finally measured the magnetic field and the radio emissions that are tied to the magnetic field, that the inside of Saturn is moving uh, quite slowly. But, well, it's moving more slowly than most of the storms in the atmosphere. And the, the difference in those speeds translates to 500 meters per second for the winds, which is over a thousand miles an hour. And that made Saturn a lot windier planet than Jupiter. And that was the big surprise for me when, we, when Voyager got there. Voyager 1 approached Saturn in such a way that it flew past Titan before its closest approach to Saturn. That trajectory then, because of the tilt of the satellite system around uh, Saturn, caused the spacecraft to fly low initially and then get deflected as it made its closest approach uh, to Saturn, going through the ring plane, up out of the plane of the ecliptic. We knew that Titan had an atmosphere. We had no idea how deep it was or what it was made out of. And what Voyager found was a nitrogen atmosphere with traces of methane and other hydrocarbons. And uh, it was turned out to be quite a deep atmosphere. We suspect there might be an ocean of a material called ethane. There could be all kinds of complicated hydrocarbons of different uh, colors and different uh, states, some ices, some fluids. There's all manner of, uh, of hallucination about uh, hydrocarbon goop that rains out of the atmosphere and falls on the surface. As a matter of fact, Titan remains one of the really exciting challenges for uh, future, future exploration. In the case of, um, of uh, Mimas, we see a crater on Mimas that's about 40% of its diameter. A little larger, and uh, that would have been enough to shatter the, the object. And, uh, and of course, we wouldn't see the crater then, because it would reassemble like a kind of a giant ball of sand. And uh, in the case of Tethys, there's another very large crater, even larger than the one on, on uh, Mimas. But in that case, Notice the floor has, is now rounded out so that it is curved as the rest of the uh, object's limb is. In the case of Dione, you'll notice that most of the surface is pretty bland. And only in this one region near the trailing hemisphere do we see a lot of, of, uh, of detail on the surface. Here we see a lot of crisscrossing faults uh, with wispy bright markings around them. Finally, we look at, at uh, Enceladus. We're talking about very cold regions. And here we are with this little tiny object uh, showing geologic activity of the scale that Enceladus does, in which uh, the ancient crater terrain 
has been broken and uh, has collapsed into the interior. Fluids have uh, flowed out into